In this video, we're going to have a look at trig graphs again, and this time we're going to have a look at horizontal translations where we can move the trig graph right and left. Okay, so we can kind of boil this down to one fact here. Um, usually we'll try and show you this interactively, um, but what we've got here is we've got two scenarios where we could have sine of x plus something inside a bracket and sine of x minus something inside a bracket. Similarly, cos of x plus something and cos of x minus something. So we've kind of got these two scenarios here and here. So what I like to imagine is see if when we see a bracket like this, I always like to tell my students that if we see something inside a bracket that, for example, look like this, sine of x plus 10 degrees. So inside a bracket is all about left and right. Okay, inside the bracket is all about horizontal movement. And see if when you look at this, you would probably imagine, if this was talking about horizontal movement, you would probably imagine that we would move 10 degrees to the right. But actually, when we're looking at inside of a bracket, we move the opposite way to what you think. So if we see x plus 10, we're actually going to shift everything 10 degrees to the left. Okay, if we saw something like this, that was cos of x minus 70 degrees, you would expect to move left, but inside the bracket does the opposite to what you think. So we would actually shift right 70 degrees. Okay, so what we could say for this first scenario, is that the graph moves to the left. I'm going to say, I'll say graph shifts left. And here we'll say that the graph shifts right. I've got two examples to show you. And then after I've showed you those two examples, we're going to just have a look at a few past paper questions just to see how our, our thinking can work here. Okay, so if we have a look at this graph on the left here, this is a graph of y equals 7 sine x. But what would happen if we wanted to draw the graph of y equals 7 sine x minus 10. Okay, so if we have a look at this here, we've got a bracket, so that means we're moving left and right here. And we would expect to move 10 to the left, but in actual fact, we do the opposite to what we think, so we're going to move 10 degrees to the right. So we're going to shift everything 10 degrees to the right here. So instead of starting at zero, we're going to start 10 degrees further in. So what I'm going to do to start off with is I'm just going to draw um, my trig graph as normal. So it goes up to seven, down to minus seven. This point here is zero. But this point here is 10 because I've moved it 10 degrees right. Instead of having the maximum at 90, the maximum is going to be at 100. Instead of a root at 180, we're going to have a root at 190. Instead of a, root or a minimum at 270, we're going to have a minimum at 280. And then the final point here is at 370 degrees. Okay, but we know with trig graphs, don't need to draw this little part down. Is trig graphs go on infinitely to either side? Okay, uh, usually a question might ask you to draw it in between 0 and 360. So because of that, we would have to continue this trig graph 
down from here okay and um, because then this would kind of correspond to like this turning point down here so i would need to continue it at that little stage there so it then starts up and goes down if i just wanted to sketch it in between 0 and 360 i would probably have to stop my drawing somewhere here and so this part we wouldn't draw okay but essentially what we've got here in between 0 and 360 is a graph of 7 x 7 sine x minus 10 okay so what that means is we've shifted the graph 10 degrees to the right okay here we can see the graph of y equals 4 cos x degrees now let's imagine what if we had to draw y equals 4 cos of x plus 20 degrees so here you can see we're working inside the bracket so we're going to do the opposite to what we think we're going to move left and right we would expect to move right because it's plus but in fact we are going to move left 20 degrees so instead of starting at zero we're going to start 20 degrees left of that so we're going to start at minus 20 maybe somewhere here and we'll draw our cost graph like so and i'll just mark at this point here was minus 20. so this point here this maximum point here would be four this point here wouldn't be 90 it'd be 20 degrees back 70. this point here would be minus four uh, this point here would be 160 20 degrees back 250 and the first revolution would happen or would complete at 340 but I usually want to draw in between 0 and 360 so I would probably have to continue my drawing a little bit to start the next revolution and I would say that that point there would be the point 360 and if I were usually asked to draw in between 0 and 360 if a question ever asked you to draw the diagram draw the graph for x in between 0 and 360 what you'd be expected to do even though we would start at minus 20 and the revolution would finish at 360 what you'd be expected to do would you, you'd be expected to draw it starting from 0 so you'd need to know that you're not starting at the highest point which is up here you're starting at a little bit lower and although the, full, the first revolution finishes at 340 you'd need to go the next 20 degrees to make sure you've got it in between 0 and 360 okay we've got a few examples I just have a look at uh, just some few past paper questions this actually does come up quite a lot it's got big applications in higher maths as well okay part of the graph of three, y equals 3 cos of x plus 45 degrees is shown in the diagram the diagram has a minimum turning point at A. State the coordinates of A. Okay, so let's have a look at this. 3 cos of x plus 45 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore this part. And at the side, I'm just going to do a wee sketch of 3 cos x. I'll do it down here. Three cos x looks something like this here. Zero. 90 180 270 and that point there is 360 so we can see that we've got some movement inside a bracket here so we've got some movement left and right if we have a look inside the bracket it's plus 45 so we would expect to move 45 to the right but we're actually going to move 45 degrees to the left the question says the graph has a minimum turning point to a We'll see the minimum turning point here. What is that point in a normal graph? So that would be the point 180 minus 3. But because of this fact here, we've moved 45 degrees to the left. Okay, so that means that see this 180 degrees, we're going to move it 45 degrees backwards. So therefore, well we can I know that this point here is going to go down to minus 3. 
And to work out the coordinate here, it's going to be 180 minus 45, which is 135. Okay, because I've moved back from the minimum turning point, I've moved back 45 degrees. So the coordinates of A is 135 minus 3. Okay, I've got another past exam question here. Part of the graph of y equals a sine x plus b is shown in the diagram. State the values of a and b. Okay, so we've got a sine graph, so I'm just going to draw what my sine graph should look like. So 0, maximum at 90, root at 180, minimum at 270, and the first revolution finishes at 360. It looks to us that it goes up to 4 and down to minus 4. So hopefully you're quite happy that I've got the graph of y equals 4 sine x here. And hopefully you're quite happy to identify that a is the value 4. But see if we have a look specifically at this point. This point here, 210 degrees is where the root happens. But see if we have a look at this point here. The root happens at 180. But we can see that it has actually been shifted 30 degrees to the right. Do you see that? It should have been somewhere here, 180, but it's actually went 30 degrees to the right. So therefore, this should correspond to the graph of y equals 4 sine x minus 30 degrees. It's minus 30 because we've moved to the right. Remember, we do the opposite to what we think because we expect this point to have been at 180. It goes up to 4 and down to minus 4, that's how we get our 4. One we think is really important is state the values of a and b. We need to write down what a equals and what b equals. So in this example, a equals 4 and b equals minus 30. And finally, 